What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Damn Tam Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, July 3rd, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Answer Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com, or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Robert Downey Jr., who has played Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since 2008, says he is still happy to be part of the franchise. As at this week's press conference for Spider-Man Homecoming, if he sees the movie, led by 21-year-old actor Tom Hodland, as something of a passing of the torch, or if he would like to continue appearing in various Marvel superhero blockbusters, Downey Jr. quipped, I've seen been semi-retired since the first weekend Iron Man was released. The 52-year-old added, the great thing about life is good things happen happen i'll speak to my for myself and you get inflated and you think oh my god i've created everything that has gone my way and then things happen where you go all right there's little evidence to the contrary and at this point you go back to it's nice to just be on this call sheet so as you can see i've changed dramatically and i'm extremely humble today downey jr has starred in three iron man movies the incredible hulk two avengers pictures and captain america civil war all of which are part of the marvel cinematic universe downey is also expected to coast star in a pair of upcoming Avenger movies set for release in 2018 and 2019. Evan Peters has signed on to return as mutant Quicksilver in Fox's upcoming X-Men prequel, Dark Phoenix. Peters joined the superhero ensemble film the same time as Lamar Johnson, a star from Canadian show The Next Step, has been cast, knowing The Hollywood Reporter. Peters has previously portrayed Quicksilver, the son of main antagonist Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, who can run at super speeds in 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past and 2016's X-Men Apocalypse. Quicksilver was last seen in Apocalypse, once again, using his speed to slow down time in order to save the X-Men from certain danger. The character has also yet to reveal to Magneto that he is the villain's son. Dark Phoenix, based on the classic X-Men comic series The Dark Phoenix Saga, will feature how the Phoenix Force inherits Jean Grey, played by Sophie Turner's Bali, unlocking her true power and turning her into a dangerous force. The film, said to be written and directed by X-Men franchise producer Simon Kinberg, will also feature the returns of Fassbender, James McAvoy, who plays Professor X, Jennifer Lawrence, who plays Mystique, Nicholas Holt, who plays Beast, Alexandra Shipp, who plays Storm, Ty Sheridan, who plays Cyclops, and Cody smith McPhee, who plays Nightcrawler. Production is set to begin in Montreal this week, Report the wrap. Fox has dated X-Men Dark Phoenix for November 8, 2018. Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark says season 7 will be, quote, very satisfying. The 30-year-old British actress who plays Daenerys Targaryen on the HBO series said in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine that the new season will tie, quote, some loose ends and confirm or deny long-standing rumors. Clark said of the North Ireland capital, uh, spoiler alert, I normally don't spend very much time in Belfast, but this last season I spent a little more time there, where many of the scenes in Westeros are filmed. She added, it's a really interesting season in terms of some loose ends that have been tied, some really satisfying plot points, some things where you're like, oh my god, I forgot about that. Rumors are going to be confirmed or denied. Game of Thrones will premiere a seventh season July 16th and return for an eighth and final season in 2018. Clark confessed the show's end will be jarring, but says she won't return to star in any potential spin-offs. The actress shared, there's going to be a shakeup of my identity, I think, and I feel like I'm only going to understand what the last seven years has been when we stop. She asserted, I mean, I have no doubt there'll be prequels and sequels and who knows what else, but I'm doing one more season and then that'll be it. Game of Thrones Season 7 released a new trailer featuring Clark last week. The actress's co-star, Kit Harrington, who portrays Jon Snow, previously confirmed in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that Season 7 will be moving much quicker than the previous seasons. The actor says the season is really different than any other season because it's accelerating towards the end. A lot of stuff collides and happens much quicker than you're used to seeing on Thrones. It's quite exciting. 
Netflix says it has ordered a second season of its satirical series, Dear White People, from creator and executive producer Justin Sminnen, and the show stars Logan Browning, Brandon P. Bell, Antoinette Robinson, Deron Horton, John Patrick Amadori, Ashley Blaine Featherston, and Marquis Richardson. Production on season two will begin later this year, with ten new episodes expected to debut in 2018. Yvette Lee Bowser is returning as showrunner. Season one premiered in April and picked up where the 2014 movie by the same name left off. A uh, synopsis for the streaming service says, set against the backdrop of a predominantly white Ivy League union university where racial tensions bubble just below the surface, Dear White People is a send-up of the now post-racial post, uh, America that weaves together a universal story of finding one's own identity and forging a wholly unique path. NBC says it has renewed its competition show World of Dance for a second season. Season 1 is currently airing with Jennifer Lopez, Neo, and Derek Huff as judges and Gina Duan Tatum as hosts. Uh, Lopez said in a statement Thursday, I am so proud to not only star but produce a show that is so close to my heart. I am so happy that World of Dance has resonated with audiences and we're able to put dancers on the pedestal they deserve. I cannot wait to continue this journey and my partnership with NBC. Meredith Auer, the president of Universal Television Alternatives studio says, we're thrilled that, that the unrivaled athleticism and authenticity that inspired us to create World of Dance has been embraced by both the dance community and our viewers. The amazing dancers competing this season have proven to not only entertain us, but to elevate our expectations and expand our imagination. The bar has been set extremely high for season two. The competition will be fierce, and we'll all witness greatness. Paul Tedjeli, the president of Alternative and Reality Co uh, Group at NBC's Entertainment Unscripted program, says, Jennifer Lopez has been a formidable executive producer and leader for this franchise. Her partner with Meredith Ara and the Universal Television Alternative Studio has been remarkable. The extraordinary ratings and digital performance is a testament to the unique capabilities of Universal Television Alternative Studio in crafting a format that works on all platforms and is instantly scalable. A good idea needs an amazing launch partner and NBC Universal Comcast has proven its marketing prowess once again. Universal Pictures Home Entertainment has released a trailer for Cult of Chucky, the seventh installment in the franchise about a doll inhabited by the spirit of a serial killer. The horror movie will be released October 3rd on Blu-ray, DVD, digital, and on demand. Chucky Complete 7 Movie Collection will also be available on Blu-ray and DVD on this date. Uh, the... The synopsis of the latest sequel says fans of the world's most demonic doll are in for another blood-splattered treat as Chucky continues his reign of terror behind the locked doors of an insane asylum. The most terrifying unrated chapter yet of the Child's Play saga reunites franchise creators Don Mancini and David Kirshner with the iconic cast in a twist of tales of terror that will outstrip audiences' wildest expectations. The ensemble includes Alex Vincent, Jennifer Tilly, and Brad Dourdeff. Corinne Olympios won't return to Bachelor in Paradise following her involvement in a highly publicized scandal on the ABC series. The 24-year-old reality star confirmed she is quitting the show in a statement Thursday after ending her legal team's investigation into claims fellow contestant Demario Jackson sexually assaulted her during filming. Uh, Olympios explained, my intent over the past few weeks has been to learn and understand what happened on June 4th. While I never filed complaints or accusations against anyone associated with Bachelor in Paradise, my team and I felt it was important to be thorough in getting to the bottom of what occurred. She added, I felt victimized by the fact that others were judging me through conflicting and unsubstantiated reports. While I myself have no recollection of the events that transpired, my team's investigation to this matter has now been completed to my satisfaction. I'm also happy about the changes that have been made to the production of Bachelor in Paradise. The star says, while I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to have been a participant on The Bachelor, and while I was invited to return to Bachelor in Paradise, when production resumed, I respectfully made the decision not to. ABC and Warner Brothers Television suspended filming this month after producers raised concerns about Jackson and Olympios taking part in sexual acts in the pool while under the influence of alcohol. Warner Brothers concluded its own investigation last week after finding no evidence of misconduct. TMZ reported Tuesday the new Bachelor in Paradise policies include a two-drink maximum per hour. Sources says that the show's crews and bartenders will be tasked with monitoring drinking levels among the cats. Jackson himself said in an interview with E! News published this week that the events of the scandals were, quote, the hardest 11 days of his entire life. 
He added his focus on his family and not only and not on his potential return to Betcher in paradise. Longtime cast members Daniel Day Kim and Grace Park will not be returning for the eighth season of the Sunset Cop drama Hawaii Five O. Peter Nekov, the show's executive producer, told Deadline.com, I'll never forget meeting Daniel while still writing the pilot and being certain there was no actor who I'd want to play Chin Ho Kelly. Needless to say, Daniel has been an instrumental part of the success of Hawaii Five O over the past seven seasons, and it has been a privilege to know him. Grace's presence gave Hawaii Five O a beauty and serenity to each episode. She was a consummate collaborator, helping build her character from day one. There will always be Ohana to us. We'll miss them both, and we wish them both all the best. Uh, CBS said in a statement to the Hollywood Reporter, we're so appreciative of Daniel and Grace's enormous talents, professional excellence, and the aloha spirit they brought to each and every of our 168 episodes. They helped us build an exciting new Hawaii Five-0, and we wish them all the best and much success in their next chapter. Mahalo and a holy how until we meet again. The character's absence reportedly will be addressed in the show's Season 8 premiere on September 29th. Ready Player One star Olivia Cook is set to play Becky Sharp on ITV's seven-part adaptation of William Makepeace Thackeray's novel Vanity Fair. The miniseries was written by Gwyneth Hughes and is being produced by Mammoth Screen in collaboration with Amazon Studios. It will be filmed on location in and around London with additional shooting in Budapest starting in September. Uh, Polly Hill, the British network's head of programming, said in a statement, Vanity Fair feels like the perfect classic to adapt for ITV, and Gwyneth Hughes' stunning script bringing the novel to life in a way that will really connect with the modern audience. The question was always, who will be our perfect Becky Sharp? And that is undoubtedly Olivia Cook. So we are thrilled she has agreed to play Becky and what promises to be an exciting new drama for ITV next year. Uh, added Damien Timmer, uh, we are so proud to be working with ITV and Amazon in this most glorious of stories. The combination of Olivia Cook, Gwyneth Hughes, and Thackeray will be an irresistible one, and we're looking forward to watching Becky Sharp conquer the 21st century. Comedian Jared with Carmichael and NBC have announced the sitcom The Carmichael Show has been canceled after three seasons. Carmichael said it in a statement to Deadline.com Friday, for three seasons, okay, two and a half, I got to make a show that I love with my friends. It's something I've wanted to do since I was 13. Now I'm excited to go make other things that I love. Thank you to every person who has worked or watched The Carmichael Show. NBC Chairman Green, Bob Greenblatt and NBC Entertainment President Jennifer Salk told Variety in their own prepared remarks, we are enormously pleased proud of the Carmichael show and Jared's talent and vision to do a classic comedy uh, sitcom that also tapes in, uh, taps into issues and relevant stories from the real world. We thank and salute the cast, crew, and producers, and especially Jared, for three critically acclaimed seasons. The entertainment industry trade newspaper said that the show is ending because Carmichael is ready to move on to other projects. Charles Spencer, the brother of the late Princess Diana, will appear in ABC's two-night television program, The Story of Diana. Scheduled to air August 9th to the 10th, the four-hour special will also feature interviews with Richard Branson, Jess Cage, India Hicks, Lana Marks, Elizabeth Vargas, and others. Uh, the uh, press release says on the eve of Princess Diana's birthday, ABC and Time Inc.'s People announced its list of exceptional voices to be featured in the story of Diana. Charles IX, Earl Spencer, brother of the late Diana, Princess of Wales, gives his ex exclusive U.S. interview, providing personal and touching stories of his beloved older sister set to archival and home movie footage of Diana and her from her childhood through her adult life. This rare opportunity to hear from someone so close to the People's Princess will share an intimate glimpse into her remarkable yet far too short life. Diana, who was married to Prince Charles from 1981 to 1996, died from injuries sustained in a Paris car wreck on August 31st, 1997. She would have turned 56 years old on Saturday. Greta Van Susteren is exiting MSNBC after the news anchor joined the network in January after departing from Fox News. Van Susteren wrote on Twitter Thursday to announce her exit. I'm out at MSNBC. Her husband, Joan Call, noted to CNN they let her go and added, we're working out contract issues now. 
And MSNBC President Phil Griffin said in the memo, we have enjoyed having her on our air, and we're thankful to her and the show's team. Van Susteren hosted for the record on MSNBC in a 6 p.m. slot, which will soon be filled by the network's chief legal correspondent and weekend host Ari Mebler in July. Legendary actress Olivia de Havilland has sued FX, saying that series few, Betty Ver and Joan, negatively and inaccurately portrayed her as a gossip monger. The Gone with the Wind actress, who turns 101 on Saturday, filed a lawsuit in California Superior Court on Friday. She says few showrunners used her name and image without permission or compensation. The suit reads, putting false statements into a living person's mouth and damaging their reputation is not protected by the First Amendment because the work is cloaked as fiction. Few documents the rival between actress Betty Davis, played by Susan Sarandon, and Joan Crawford, played by Jessica Lang. Actress Catherine Zeta-Jones portrayed the Avalon in the anthology series. The lawsuit seeks unspecific com uh, compensatory and punitive damages for emotional distress and damage to her reputation. It also seeks to prevent the network from using her name and image in any series of the, in the future. The second season of Feud, called Charles and Diana, will focus on the marriage and conflict between Prince Charles and Princess Diana. The season is expected to premiere in 2018. Production is to begin in the United Kingdom this week on a six-part drama called The Split. The Sundance and BBC collaboration is billed as a, quote, authentic, layered, and witty exploration of modern marriage and the legacy of divorce through the lens of the Defoe's, a family of female lawyers at the heart of London's fast-paced and emotionally charged divorce circuit. From writer Abby Morgan and executive producer Jane Featherstone, the series boasts an ensemble of Nicola Walker, Mira Saul, Stephen Magnigan, Fiona Button, Deborah Finn and Lay, Annabelle Sholey, Barry Asma, and Stephen Tompkinson. Walker said in a statement, I'm delighted to be joining the Defoe family and walking in Hannah's shoes as she picks her way through other people's marriages and relationships, all the while questioning her own. Gotham star Donald Logue says Sunday via social media his 16-year-old transgender daughter Jade, who also goes by the name Arlo, remains missing after almost a week. Logue announced this past Tuesday that Jade was most recently seen in the Barclay Center, Fort Greene, Brooklyn area of New York City late Monday afternoon. The actor posted a heartfelt message on Twitter and Facebook regarding the situation this week alongside what he said was one of his favorite childhood photos of Jade, which showed the youth with a tiny frog perched on her nose. Logue wrote, I love Love her and who she is. We want you home, Jade. Logue went on to say the authorities are assisting him to finding his daughter and asked that anyone who knows anything about her whereabouts please help her get home safely. Logue says her tribe is wonderful. I've met many wonderful people through Jade, but there are some predators who swim among their ranks knowing they're dealing with the sweet, trusting souls. Whoever knows where she is, whoever may be with her, clearly this thing has become big and crazy. The net has been flung far and wide and luckily I've dodged teams from the NYP FBI and others involved. The point is, you may have good intentions to help her, but I'm sure you realize that this situation is bigger than you could have anticipated. It's okay. Just drop her off. Let her get back in touch with her mother, Casey, and or me. We'll take her back with hugs and no questions asked. Contact us if you have any information regarding Jay's disappearance or Detective Frank Luzzi at 718-636-6547. There is an out for the situation that works for all involved. We promise. A video showing Adam Driver telling a nursing school student she won a scholarship from Budweiser and Folds of Honor has gone viral. The four-minute film got nearly two million views in the five days since it was posted on YouTube. The message accompanying the clip reads, This summer we've been honored those who protect our freedom to dream, so we're delivering a life-changing scholarship to a family who has sacrificed for their country and for each other with the help of Folds of Honor and Adam Driver. Hashtag this buds for you. Driver is a former U.S. Marine who was injured and medically discharged before his unit was deployed to Iraq. He is seen in Budweiser's viral video casually dressed and driving a truck to the home of John Williams, a U.S. Army veteran who was hurt during a training exercise before Desert Storm in the 1990s, Stanley copes with the pain from the injury as he drives a bus to support his family. The film tells the story of his struggles, as well as how his daughter Haley works 40 hours a week to pay for school so she can eventually help other disabled vets. It ends with driver Teary Eye telling her she doesn't have to worry about her schooling costs anymore and hugging the family. Driver is known for his work in the HBO series Girls, as well as the movie Star Wars The Force Awakens, Patterson, and Silence. 
Rosa Milano says she and Shannon Doherty have ended their feud and plan to get together. The 44-year-old actress discussed her reconciliation with her 46-year-old former Charm co-star in an interview Thursday with E! News following Doherty's battle with cancer. Milano says, Shannon and I talk a lot on Twitter via direct message, and I spoke to her maybe two or three days ago, and we decided that we're going to get together. That date has not been set yet, but yes. Uh, she explained, I think we're just at ages now where what happened 15 years ago is now irrelevant. I think that what she has gone through and motherhood in my life, I think it just changes people. Star added, I'm so happy that she's feeling well. I pray for every day that she would feel well, and I can't wait to see her. Milano Doherty and Holly Mary Combs co-starred as sisters Phoebe Prue and Piper Hallowell on the first three seasons of Charm before Doherty exited the show. Well, I'll confess on Watch What Happens Live in 2013 that tensions sometimes ran high on set. The actor said of Doherty, I can tell you that when we were on the air with her for three years, and there were definitely some rough days, Holly and Shannon were best friends for like ten years before the show started, so it was very much sort of like high school. I would hope that in our thirties it would, wouldn't feel like that anymore. She qualified, it was the best job I've ever had in my life, and certainly a learning experience for sure. Doherty announced in April that she is in remission after being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015. She said at the time her heart is certainly lighter, but told fans the next five years are crucial in her recovery. Calvin Harris has detailed his feelings concerning his relationship with ex-girlfriend Taylor Swift and how the pop star revealed she wrote one of his hit songs. Uh, the Scottish DJ said during an interview with GQ about how he reacted to Swift revealing that she penned his song with Rihanna Tile, This Is What You Came For, it was completely the wrong instinct. He added, I was protecting what I see as one my, my, of my one talent in the world being the little. It felt like things were piling on top of me, and that was when I snapped. Harris had tweeted after Swift's song rev uh, songwriting reveal, hurtful to me at this point that her and her team would go so far out of their way to try and make me look bad at this stage. I figure if you're happy in your new relationship, you should focus on that instead of trying to tear your ex-boyfriend down to something to do. The pair called it quits in June 2016 after dating for 15 months. Harris said of their time together before and before admitting that his songwriting rant was a result of me succumbing to pressure, the aftermath of the relationship was way more heavily publicized than the relationship itself. When we were together, we were very careful for, for it not to be a media circus. She respected my feelings in that sense. The 33-year-old says, It took me a minute to realize that none of that matters. I'm a positive guy. For both of us, it was the wrong situation. It clearly wasn't right, so it ended. But all of that stuff that happened afterwards. Sarah Neal and Glee alum Nea Rivera are set to star in the YouTube upcoming revival of Step Up. The street dance film series will turn into a 10-episode TV drama that will debut this fall on YouTube's subscription streaming service, YouTube Red. Now, Step Up High Water takes place inside Atlanta's famed High Water Performing Arts School, which is led by Neo, nor the Hollywood Reporter. Rivera stars as a former dance turn administrator who shares a history with Neo's character. High Water will follow the story of Janelle, played by Lauren McClain, and her twin brother Tal, played by Patrice Jones, as they are introduced to the Atlanta party scene after moving down from south from, or, uh, or from Ohio. Also joining the cast is Fazion Love, Marcus Mitchell, Jay Chinowith, Carlito Oliverio, Terrence Green, R. Marcus Taylor, and newcomers Eric Grace and Kendra Osisiania. Original Step Up stars Channing Tatum and Gina Dillon Tatum are executive producing alongside with producers from the film series Adam Shackman, Jennifer Goblin, and Meredith Mer Milton. Original songs from High Wire are being written by Grammy Award winning singer songwriter Jason Pooh Bear. Boyd and Jingle Jared Gustad. Four time Grammy winning singer Annie Nel Lennox shared an email she received from a Los Angeles radio station claiming she has potential. Lennox shared a photo of an email from a radio station employee who apparently believed that they had discovered the veteran musician and sought to offer a spot in their rotation. Lennox wrote, I think I'm in with a chance. The message from a new music coordinator identified only as Kylie boasted the station's monthly 100,000 unique listeners and requested some of Lennox's music. Kylie wrote, 
I came across your music online. I really like what I heard. I find artists who I think have potential and get them in on rotation at our station. If you like, please send over the MP3 for your latest single. While Lennox poked fun at the idea of being contacted for her potential after decades in the music industry, she warned young artists of, for falling victim to similar scams. Lennox wrote, I urge any new or indeed established artists to send that kind of email straight to your trash. Companies reaching out cold to help you, sending emails that are clearly formulaic with links at asking for cash to upload your tracks are a very dodgy business indeed and not one I want to see anyone fall foul of. British music superstar Adele announced via Facebook she has canceled her final two concerts in London's Wimbledon Stadium because she damaged her vocal cords. She wrote in a simple message Friday, I have damaged my vocal cords and on medical advice I simply am un unable to perform over the weekend. To say I am completely heartbroken would be a complete understatement. I'm sorry, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Knowing she had performed 121 shows since early 2016 for her latest tour, the 29-year-old singer says she considered lip singing during the last two nights so she wouldn't have to cancel but ultimately decided against doing that because quote it wouldn't be the real me up there and finally, the animated movie Despicable Me 3, featuring the voice talents of Steve Carell, Kristen Wiig, and Miranda Cosgrove, is the number one movie in North America this weekend, earning $75.4 million in receipts, Box Office Mojo.com announced Sunday. Coming in at number two is Baby Driver with $21 million, Transformers The Last Night at number three with $17 million, Wonder Woman at number four with $16.1 million, and Cars at number five with $9.5 million. Rounding out the top tier are The House at number six with $9 million dollars, the Bagal number seven with three point three million dollars, the Mummy in number eight with two point eight million dollars, Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales at number nine with two point four million dollars, and All Eyes on Me and number ten with one point nine million dollars. And as your entertainment report for Monday, July 3rd, 2017. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Wednesday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio Dot com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great 4th of July. Good night, and God bless you all.